Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to have Scotty Scheffler back in the interview room. Scotty, thank you for your time. You find yourself in a familiar position atop the leaderboard headed into the final round. How will you draw on your experience from two years ago as you prepare for tomorrow? Yeah, I think I'll have a better understanding of what the, the morning's like tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I'm proud of how I played today. It was a good fight out there. The, the golf course was extremely challenging. I mean, the greens were were very firm, very fast, and uh, it was it was extremely difficult again today. So um, probably looking looking for more of, a, more of the same tomorrow. Thank you. With that, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, Jeffrey? Scotty, you, Scotty, you had um, dropped a couple shots, and then you make the big eagle at uh, 13. We, we saw some nice emotion there on that green. Just take us through what you were releasing there. Yeah, well, you know, I made the turn. Um, I felt like I missed some opportunities there on 8 and 9. And uh, then I hit what was a decent shot into 10. It lands, you know, obviously I wasn't trying to land it back there by the pin, but I get a, a bad gust, and it lands 8 feet from the pin. And it ends up in the bushes back there, and I make double. Um, and then make another bogey there at 11, and all of a sudden I'm probably going from in the lead to a few out of the lead. And then, um, you know, things can happen pretty fast out there. And, uh, you know, going to number 12, had another good shot, and it just went over the green and hit a nice pitch. And all of a sudden I'm looking at another seven-footer for par, and, you know, I knocked that one in. And then um, that putt on 13 – it was nice because it was trickling up there towards the cup, but I didn't know whether or not it was going to get there, and it kind of just nudged, nudged right over the edge and went in. So it was it was exciting, and you know um, it was nice to be able to steal a couple shots there on 13 and kind of get back in the tournament. Jeff, Scotty, uh, the back nine played a couple shots over par today, and the, you know even though the wind was kind of quiet for you guys on the back, it it looked like a few times you looked at some some cups like 14 that you thought were were just in weird spots. Was it was it just really tough hole locations? Uh, I mean, the greens just got ridiculously fast and firm. Um, the reason I was looking at 14 is because I'm putting down that hill. It wasn't that it was at a weird location. It was just, I mean, it was basically like putting up to like a small volcano there. Um, that's That can happen at the end of the day when, um, you know, you have a lot of guys stepping there to pick their ball up out of the hole. You know, the area around the cup will become lower and the cup will, will raise a bit. That one was a bit more aggressive than I've seen. Like if you watch my putt from behind, you can see it kind of going up towards the cup and then it just like rides the side of it. And, and goes off because um, I thought I had a chance to go in. It, I mean, it didn't even come close. Uh, but yeah, it was it was very challenging out there. But you know, it's a major championship. I don't think Augusta wants their golf course to be very easy. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> Brantley, Scotty, two years ago you had a pretty emotional Masters Sunday morning, and you kind of credited Meredith for helping you get in the right state of mind. What do you anticipate tomorrow morning being like with her not here and with with Sam uh, no longer here with you either? Uh, Yeah, it'll be a little different. Um, I didn't want to be alone at the house, so I recruited a few of my friends to come stay with me that were in town. So we got a couple of my close buddies at the house. Um, You know, it's kind of the the same group that's been in the Bahamas with us the last few years. And um, they came over this morning, maybe some breakfast, and we hung out, and then I came to the course. And so um, it'll just be more of that tomorrow, probably calm air and and chill and relax. But, yeah, I didn't want to be in a house all by myself. you know, this weekend didn't really seem like like that exciting to me. So I'd rather have some, some friends staying with me. <laughs> Claire. Hi, Scotty. So what are you guys going to do tonight maybe to get your mind off it, have for dinner? Um, w- w- with these guys, it'll be pretty easy for – us not to talk about golf. Um, we got some some fun guys. That, you know, they're some of my closest friends. And, um, yeah, it's just it, – it's just be nice to get some time together, um, probably order some food, hang out, um, maybe play some cards. Who knows? I really, uh, I really don't know. Um, yeah, we'll see. Chip. Uh, Sean. You spend a lot of time walking on, on the back nine staring at your shoes. And I was wondering if that's a, a conscious decision, and, and if so, why? You're looking down instead of looking around. Um, I, I really couldn't tell you. Maybe my Nikes just looked really white or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no I, I do my best to try and stay in my own little world out there. And sometimes, you know, when um, you get little surprises like I did there on 10 and 11, um, yeah, just trying to do my best to stay in the moment. So maybe that's why my head was down a bit more, but I, I wasn't consciously thinking about that. Marty? Sorry to pile on the emotional thing, brother, but what for you personally, what is the emotional value of having been in this position before, having done it before? I mean, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Um, 
I mean, it's nice having that experience, but going into tomorrow, that's really all that it is. And I can, you know, reflect on some of the stuff from that round. And um, this is a position that I'm very familiar with, and I'm excited for the, the challenge of going and trying to win the golf tournament tomorrow. But at the end of the day, it really is all about my process and, you know, staying patient out there and just trying to hit good shots and, and hit some quality putts as well. Jose? Yep, yeah, Scotty. The par fives on the back nine are always important. How big was for you the the eagle at 13 and then the birdie at 15 to change back the momentum back to you today? Yeah, I, I would say extremely important. You know, that's why I think you saw a bit of emotion there for me on 13 because that was, you know, an important time in the tournament and um, it was nice kind of turning my Sunday or my Saturday around and. Um, yeah, I felt like I didn't take advantage of the two par fives on the front, so it was nice to get a few shots back there on the back nine. Kevin? Hey, you, you've been a great putter when you were a kid. Every, you probably made a, a thousand putts that you looked at. What does it feel like to be able to like trust your eyes again, to be like, I'm going to start it on this line and it's going to go in? Yeah, it's a, it's a good place to be. Um, be it. I feel like I'm starting most of my putts online, and um, I'm in a comfortable spot with my game. and. Um, yeah, it's, I'm definitely excited about tomorrow. And yeah, I think at times last year, I, I've talked about it a decent amount, but I think I was just overthinking things. And so it's nice to be able to just put the ball down and use my eyes and just try and see that ball go in the hole. And um, yeah, it's, it's a good place to be. Brody? Uh, first off, you said yesterday you made yourself breakfast for the first time. What did you make? Um, eggs and some toast. It's pretty, yeah, pretty. You delegated today, huh? You delegated today to your friends. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, but because you're in final groups so often, it is something you've gotten so used to. I guess what have you learned about the preparation, the process you talk about about how to handle these kind of weekend final rounds? Yeah, I think managing my energy, managing my expectations. Um, you know, I've I've talked about it a little bit, but I, I do have high expectations for myself, and um, I try to do my best to get that stuff out of the way in the morning. And by the time I get to the course, it's kind of getting into my own little world and just trying to hit shots. Um, you know, being patient out there, I think, is really important, um, especially on a day like today. I mean, it was so, it was a frustrating day to be playing this golf course. It was so challenging, and um, you know, like y'all said, the wind was down, but I can't imagine it played much easier this afternoon than it did yesterday morning when some of the guys were out there. Um, I'd be interested to see what the scores were like. Adam. Scotty, um, on the broadcast, they mentioned again that if Meredith were to go into labor, that you would leave. And I'm just curious, hypothetically, what's the scenario? Who does she call? Do you have a private jet waiting? What's, how would that work? Yeah, I definitely have a way to get home pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, we have somebody here that, that has access to their cell phone. That's all right. Um, <laughs> and and yes, I'll be available to to go home at when you know, whenever I need to. You think she'll call? She better call. <laughs> <laughs> Simon. Uh, final round, obviously, final group, and, and the big crowds are going to be following you around. Are you somebody who feeds off that energy from the crowd, or do you try and block it out? How do you think it'll affect you? Yeah, I think I, I try to feed off the energy from the crowd a little bit. It's nice walking onto these tee boxes and getting a nice ovation. You know, I think number 12 was kind of one of those moments for me today. You know, I double 11 and bogey, or sorry, uh, double 10 and bogey 11, and then we were walking up to that tee on 12, and everybody kind of stands up behind the tee and starts cheering me on. It's, it's a really nice feeling to have the crowd behind you, and uh, I try to embrace that as much as possible out there. Ryan? Adi, you've talked before about the, the game and ongoing count that you and Ted have with the number of holeouts uh, from, from around the green. Why do you think you have such a knack for doing that? For, for holding out around the greens? Uh, gosh, I'm not really sure. I think I spent a lot of time around the short game area at Royal Oaks when I was a kid, and there was a lot of pros out there that I used to watch and try to chip and putt with them because I couldn't, couldn't compete with them on the golf course yet, but I felt like I could compete with them on and around the greens. And so that was always fun for me to, to get some of the pros out there when I was a young kid and, and challenge them to short game contests. So I think I learned from a young age how to chip and, and chip under pressure. Brendan? Guy, um, I apologize if you were asked anything like this, but uh, you, you were so open uh, a couple of years ago after you won at talking about the, the prior night and just trying to sleep and kind of just everything that was happening. Um, do you think, or how do you think you'll sleep on the lead tonight? Do you think you'll actually get, you know, hours of sleep or what? Yeah, uh, a couple of years ago, I actually got a great night's sleep. Mm. Um, it was just an unusual position for me because at the time, I 
starting 2022, I hadn't won yet on tour. I had a, had a good Ryder Cup, and I had played a lot of consistent golf, but I still hadn't won on tour. And then all of a sudden, I win Phoenix, um, the match play, and Bay Hill. And then I, I win the match play to get to number one in the world, show up here as number one in the world. And then going into Sunday, I think Meredith and I were just – a little bit emotional about what was going on at the time because our lives were, were changing at a very rapid pace. And I think now we've settled in to a little bit more of, of where our lives are at. Um, and right now, you know, the most exciting thing for us is not winning the Masters. It's, a, you know, a baby coming here pretty soon. And so things are a lot different now, and I feel like we've both matured. But I think a lot of that emotion from, from Sunday morning a few years ago was more about just how quickly our life was, was changing. And it was more of a, are we ready for this type of thing? And, um, yeah, that's when Mary gave me that nice speech, and um, here we are. Jin Jin. Thank you uh, so much, Scotty. You, uh, congratulations for leading the game. Uh, so actually, it seems like you played um, turbulent rounds, actually. Can you talk about the input of your caddy, Tats? Um, did, is there anything interesting to talk about? Uh, how did he help you out uh, in this round? Yeah, yeah, he did a good job of keeping me in a good headspace out there. Um, like I said, definitely had some surprises there in the middle of the round. Um, I felt like I was in a great position on eight, didn't get up and down, and then I missed a, a pretty makeable birdie putt there on nine. And then a 10, we get the weird wind gust to make double, um, and 11 make bogey. So all of a sudden, you know, I go from being probably in the lead to out of the lead, and, and Ted's, you know, does a good job of keeping us focused on the task at hand. And, um, you know, we did a good job of keeping ourselves in the tournament today. <coughs> Krishna Swami. Scotty, we know how close you are and are friends with uh, Baba Watson. He won that in 2014, and here you are with the possibility of 22 and 24. Have you had a chance to speak with him or discuss anything with him? Uh, not like no, nothing like that. Um, I had breakfast with Bubba this week, maybe on on Tuesday, but outside of that, I hadn't seen him too much this week. But yeah, we are we are good friends. Um, I don't get to see him as often as I used to. But, um, yeah, he's still a good friend of mine, and, um, you know, it's nice to, to see him when I can. Marty. Scotty, who are the friends that you called to be with you this week, uh, and how do you know them, and what do they mean in your life? Um, you know, it's just a group of my, my closest friends. I, uh, some of them from college, some of them from, from post-grad. Um, we, we, uh, we, we have a small group together at home with our wives, and, uh, you know, they got permission to come here this week. Um, some of them who've also had babies recently, so it was nice for them to be able to, be able to get permission to come hang. And um, it's similar to the – I've had a group of friends come with me to the Bahamas for the last couple of years, and we've had a, just a great time. And I think these guys came maybe for the practice rounds last year, and now they're coming for the – they decided to come for the tournament this year, and um, it worked out nicely. Or I guess not nicely, but it worked out decently that – you know, I wasn't at home alone all weekend. Obviously, Sam didn't plan on missing the cut and, uh, you know, me being all alone. So it was nice that they were kind of there to, to step in and, you know, keep me company this weekend. Adam. Howdy. There were a bunch of players this week who, when they've had a, a stretch of holes like, like what you did at 10 and 11, they, they haven't been able, they've tumbled down the leaderboard. What was it that helped you to be able to stanch the bleeding there? Yeah, I think just staying patient, understanding that that kind of stuff was going to happen. And it wasn't like I really hit that many bad shots. It just it was a hard golf course. And I would say that putt on 12 was extremely important, about a seven-footer up the hill, um, which when the greens are fast and bumpy, those are, those are not the easiest putts to hole. And um, it was nice to see that ball go in and then, uh, you know, use that momentum to, to keep things rolling there at 13 and uh, into the finish. Thank you, Scotty, and best of luck tomorrow. Thanks, y'all.